welcome to the repair shop, where cherished family heirlooms are brought back to life. Anything can happen. This is the workshop of dreams. Home to furniture restorer Jay Blades. Nowadays, things are not built to last, so we've become part of this throwaway culture. It's all about preserving and restoring. We bring the old back to new. Working alongside Jay will be some of the country's leading craftspeople. I like making things with my hands. I love to see how things work, and I want to know how things work. Whether it's a Rembrandt or somebody's family piece, every painting deserves the same. Each bringing their own unique set of skills. You're about to witness some magic. They will resurrect, revive... Oh, yes! ..and rejuvenate treasured possessions and irreplaceable pieces of family history. Oh, my goodness me! It looks um, like it's new! Bringing both the objects... <gasps> oh, wow! ..and the memories that they hold back to life. <laughs> In the repair shop today... Bosh, bish, bash. Furniture's Batman and Robin, Jay and Will, pull some heroic moves to rescue a hundred-year-old chair. Wow, that's hey, impressive. Hey, where well there's done. a will, there's a way. <laughs> there's a way. <laughs> While Guillaume Pons, a specialist ceramics conservator, works on a stunning mother-of-pearl piece. First customers of the day are Scott Ferguson and Diana Colleran, here to see the repair shop's resident ceramics restorer, Kirsten Ramsey. Hello. Hi there. How are we doing? Good, thank you very much. Very well. OK, so what have we got here? <laughs> the Jolica stick stand formed as a bulldog. It's a, bu it's a bulldog? Yeah. <laughs> And poor Sweet Pea, I think he's missing a little bit of tail. So you call him well. Sweet Pea? He's called it, Sweet Pea? He is, look. Oh, <laughs> bless. <laughs> we did the christen him. He was already christened that, yes. So it looks a bit Frankenstein now, doesn't he it? He does. At least all the pieces are there. It looks quite crude, yeah. but the pieces are all there. <laughs> yeah. So you haven't got to make anything up, apart from a few little spots here that's, and there. That's true. That that's makes it easier. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know about easy, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it certainly helps. It yeah. helps. Antique collectors Diana and Scott live in Lincolnshire with their two dogs, Ginger and Lily. Come on, good girl. They're both barking about bulldogs. One day, I was speaking to one of my colleague dealers and uh, he said, look, I've got this bulldog figure. He said, it's, it's quite badly damaged, smashed about a bit. Do you want it at all? And I said, well, yeah, that'd be lovely. Thank you very much. I went into work one day and it was just there. And it was a, a big smashed up pottery bulldog called Sweet Pea. When Scott brought Sweet Pea home, I took one look and I thought, oh, my goodness. <laughs> What's that? It was a face only a mother could love. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Pea was assigned to sit by the front door. As pride of place under the stairs belonged to another very special bulldog, their beloved pet, Harvey. He was part of the family, a mainstay of the family. He was a good guard dog, he barked. He was always attentive to anything going on around the place. Harvey had been part of the family for eight years when tragedy struck. Harvey started a limp initially. The vets diagnosed arthritis, which um, got very bad very quickly. And after x-rays, the word he used was mashed. They were shot. There was nothing they could do to help him, really. So we made the decision for Harvey. Uh, not for us, for Harvey, to um, to uh, have him put to sleep. He couldn't be in that pain, so uh, we had to do it. And as you can see, um, <clears throat> quite a while after, I'm still... He was a big part of our lives. Oh, sorry. Yep. <laughs> Having the space filled under the stairs with Sweet Pea has just sort of helped us get over it a bit. It softens the blow. It helps us cope. This is a memorial to Harvey, and it would just mean an awful lot to see the silhouette at the corner of your eye of a bulldog sat alert. It would mean quite a lot to get fixed, really. 
what I'd like to do is um, clear off all this sort of old adhesive and stick it back, you know, nicely so that it looks a lot better than yes. it does. And this tail, is there anything with... Oh, no. dear, oh, dear. <laughs> OK, guys, if you leave this with us um, and we'll get back to you once we've fixed it. It'll look a lot better than it does now. Absolutely. Okay? Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. you guys take care. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. You. You've got the sentimental value, which is directly linked to Harvey. So Absolutely. It's, a bad responsibility. It's a big responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just applying the paint stripper now. This should start to break down the previous adhesive, which will enable me to um, remove it and undo the previous repair. What have you done? You covered him up? Yeah, I've covered him up. It's to hold the, um, the active chemicals sort of in place so okay. that they can actually work on the adhesive. That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life, really. He's going to look a lot more beautiful when I've finished. From feeding masterpieces... The purpose of the filling is to actually bring up the surface. ..to clocks that have fallen silent. <laughs> the repair shop squad is poised to repaint, reupholster and restore Britain's broken objects. Next to arrive is Sue Wright. She's been assigned to Frenchman Guillaume Pons, a specialist ceramics conservator who works with natural materials such as horn, amber and shell. What did you bring then? I have a mother of pearl item. Sue's brought a seashell, intricately carved with a depiction of the Last Supper. It arrived in the family via an ancestor who travelled as part of his duties to the church. I'm not quite sure whether it's come from Brazil, and that would have been about the beginning of the 20th century, yeah. or it's come back a lot further back through various ministers in the family and it was used for um, baptisms or something like that. And was the story behind Brazil then? Uh, my grandfather was working out there. All oh, right, OK. It's been broken how long? Since 1960. All oh, right. Yes. Do you know who did the repair? No. My mother. Oh, right. Hair's got the yellow 1960s type blues on yeah. it. Yes. And they obviously didn't hold. It looks like more or less everything is there. And the fact that your mother kept it for so long, uh, keeping all the bits together, it must have uh, meant a lot to her. It did, but, I mean, she was very upset when it broke, and hence why she kept all the bits. Yeah. And so we're really looking forward to seeing if you can do something with it. Yeah, you'd be very pleased, yeah. It looks very promising. He seems to be quite confident that it can be repaired and back to pristine condition, which it hasn't been in for 60 years. First of all, the, what needs to be done is the, to clean very well the glue that was put in the 60s. So my um, work today is going to be to remove all the adhesive with the scalpel. It's time consuming, but it works very well. I'm very pleased with the cleaning, actually. It, it worked very well. I don't need to put uh, much glue, just a, 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 a little drop. It's a bit tricky to do the, the bonding because the, the, the bits, as you can see, are very small and you can't really uh, put them together with tape. I will have to um, stick them together uh, with uh, some sticky wax. The wax holds the glued pieces tightly together while the adhesive is drying. Done. So that means that uh, um, we wait until tomorrow, until the, the adhesive has set, and, um, and hopefully it's going to stay together. So tomorrow it should be finished. Guillaume's final task is removing the stabilizing wax from the glued shell. Hold on now, I remove the sticky wax. 
You can see where it was broken. You can hardly see it now. It's been a very nice piece uh, to work on, and then I, I'm very pleased with the results. On the other side of the workshop, Kirsten's plans for Sweet Pea, the bulldog, are coming unstuck, but not in the way she'd hoped for. It's not going very well, actually. It's um, proving incredibly difficult to actually get the old adhesive off Sweet Pea. I don't know what they use, but it's absolutely rock hard, and I've tried all my usual techniques to actually try and break down the repair, and um, I'm just getting nowhere at the moment, so it's quite frustrating. Well. Yeah. I know you keep suggesting a sledgehammer, but um, I wonder if you have any practical suggestions. You could try drilling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Drilling, right, in the cracks with a really fine drill bit or like a really fine file, kind of like what dentists use. I know, use yeah, no, I've uh, used, yeah, yeah that's, that is a really good idea. You go to Steve, maybe if you offer to make him a cup of tea. Or some okay. toast. Okay, this workshop runs easier. on tea, doesn't yeah, it? Exactly. I think. Um, speak okay. to Steve and sure can help. Look out, here comes trouble. Ah. <laughs> I'm thinking I might actually try drilling through um, the little areas where there's... I've actually sort of broken through. I've got a very, very fine dentist drill. This drill bit should go in there really nicely. Mm. It's got a real uh, long reach to it as oh, well, okay. so you can go quite deep. OK, I'm going to give it a go. I just have to be really mindful of not actually damaging the brake edges. That might be a bit ambitious. And that's definitely not the ceramic that's crunching, is it, Steve? That's adhesive, I'm You're sure. You're starting to make me nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> Over Give to that you. to me. <laughs> <laughs> Despite careful drilling and filing, Kirsten has realised that she is in danger of further damaging the ceramic. I've tried absolutely everything I could possibly think of and also um, asked around as well sort of a few of my conservative friends. So she's had to change tack. Instead of breaking Sweet Pea apart, then putting him back together again, she's concentrating on improving the existing repairs. I'm now having to fill Sweet Pea, um, which is a little bit of a compromise. Um, it's not ideal, but it's the only thing that I can do, actually, in these circumstances. After filling and sanding several times to achieve the perfect finish, Kirsten must now disguise her repairs by creating the perfect colour match. I'm just starting to block in the colours and sort of try and um, hide the white fills that are there. There's lots and lots of different colours all over the face. But the decoration under the glaze is very sort of spotty. So I kind of just stipple with my brush to recreate that effect. It's taken Kirsten days of dogged work to get Sweet Pea looking less rough. And she still has to put the spring back into his corkscrew tail. Putting Sweet Pea's tail back on is sort of a little bit like surgery. Restoring him to his former glory. It's really critical to get the shape absolutely right at this stage. Um, you can um, sand it and shape it once it's cured, but it becomes very, very hard, and it's much, much easier to do it now while it's soft and, and malleable. With the way everyone's sort of handling the objects, you know, it's just having a respect for the, for the pieces that you're, you're working on. At the end of the day, people have brought them to you because they're, they, they're precious items, so, um, you know, we handle them with care and respect. 
It's this ethos that drives the repair shop team in their quest to recycle, renovate and rejuvenate items which were once consigned to the scrap heap. The next deserving item is being brought in by Scandinavian-born Nina Tucknot, who now lives in Hove. Oh, so this is your one, yeah? This is my rocking chair. So, tell us about it. My maternal grandparents were given it for their wedding day back in the late 1920s, and this was in Finland, where I come from. And in 1960, in August, when my parents got married, they were given it in turn for their wedding. Wow. And I'm born in 1961, and it's obviously been part of my life always. Wow. It's in 20s. Yeah. Do the maths. You're younger than me. That's nearly 100 years. It's nearly 100, nearly 100 years. years. Wow, this is nearly 100 <laughs> years old. Yeah, well, so I'm told. My grandparents had a big farm, and it was always in what they call the saal, which is like the salon. And then my parents, it was always in the lounge. But I know, as a child, I suffered very badly from severe ear infections. Okay. And my mum and dad used to take turns sitting at night, rocking me in this chair. So much history. I mean, I have never seen a rocking mechanism like this before. Never. No. Never. It, it's so uh, simple, but really effective. I yes, mean. it is. I mean, it, it means you don't topple over. You can go back a long way, uh, but it keeps you quite safe. It's a bit worse for wear. Um, this down here has always looked like that, and my mum used to stuff it with cotton wool because it used to annoy <laughs> her having a hole. Right. Um, since before it came on the journey to England, this chipped off, um, so it's never... There was a little piece there, yeah, but that, so that so. went on the journey when it came over. The one thing I would love, fabric-wise, to feature a little bit of red. Um, okay. This is the farmhouse that my grandparents had, yeah. and this is a very typical Scandinavian colour, so I kind of feel that the red a little bit of red in the fabric would just sort of tie it back back to home sort of thing. Do you reckon you could do the wood? I think I can handle the wood. You can handle, handle the fabric. The fabric, yeah. yeah. I love going a bit of red. That's that's not me. And the painting. Um, yeah, it does need to. It's had a couple of coats. It has. The last time my dad did it, and I was a little girl, so it's back in the 60s, so it's uh, not been done since. Right. OK, well, if you leave it with us, We'll fully restore it. Can't so, wait. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And to you, Will. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. I don't know how it's held on together. Because there's a cable going from this end on the left side, right. and that goes into the back leg on the left side, and there's a cable on this side, and that goes down into this side. So it's sort of like an X. I'm so, with you. So you're never going to flip off because you're being held from the other direction. Both so. ways, yeah. So simple, but, like, really clever. I get the feeling that they really, really liked it, and they're obviously excited about uh, bringing it back to its former glory. If you don't mind, bring it over to me, Bench, for me, will you? Yeah. Nice one. That's right. If you make some space... I will do. I'll be there in about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that's lovely. Over on Kirsten's workbench, Sweet Pea the Bulldog's grooming session is nearly complete. Sounds like you've got a new toy. <laughs> Kept that quiet, didn't you? You, hey? lo you love a bit of kit. I do you? love a bit of kit. So I'm just doing a little bit of airbrushing on Sweet Pea. I've hand painted most of it, and I was actually just sort of putting a clear glaze over the top. But hold on, glaze is like the end, isn't it? Well, yes. So the I'm, end is near? Well, the end is near, yes. I'm sort of in the final stages, really. Steve, come over here a minute, mate. Will, there we go. All done. Sweet pea. All done, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. When Scott and Diana left Sweet Pea at the repair shop, he was, well, a bit of a dog's dinner. Since Sweet Pea's been gone, Harvey has been at the forefront of our minds. As soon as Sweet Pea's back in the rightful place, I think we'll move on. I won't keep you waiting any longer. I've okay, got him right. just here, so... It's not Sweet Pea as you know him. Sweet Pea Mark II. Are you ready? We're ready. <laughs> yeah, definitely ready, yes. OK, yeah. there he is. <laughs> So, wow. These are all there. Uh, just wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Not 
obviously the tail oh. was missing oh, as fantastic. well. Yes. So I hope yeah. that I hope that's the right. No, that's um, beautiful. It's perfect. Can't get it's this. Sweet pea looks stunning, and I think the tail, just the icing on the cake, to have the whole thing finished off, and the colour match as well around the head, the shading, beautiful. And the inside, have you seen the inside? <laughs> How the heck have you done that? <laughs> well, you're a miracle worker. So thank right. you very much. No, thank Lovely. you. This is the lady you got thank thanked, you. not me. She's thank done all the work. It has been a pleasure. I'm so so wonderful. pleased that you're happy. Oh. Yeah. 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 I think it'll help us draw closure. I think once Sweepy's back, it's the final where chapter. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. Back inside the repair shop, Jay's getting to grips with the hundred year old rocking chair. To me, this looks a bit homemade because you've got this Regency fabric just stitched onto it. Looks like the back of some Hessian, but actually, I think it's a bit of carpet. You are making some serious progress. Yeah, it is, actually. Well, you're missing some pieces. There's a piece off the top. Well, no, I'm not missing any pieces. You're the guy that's sorting out the pieces. So I'm not missing them. They're just in your brain, your fingers, and you're going to do it all, ain't you? So I need right. a bit on here. Yeah. And then there's a bit on there that I need. I've got the other bit. It's just drying at the moment. So where are you going? Huh? I'm going to get my stuff. Oh, you're going to get your I stuff for coming. I'm going to remind my fingers. <laughs> right. What are you going to do anyway? You're going to make. You're going to fix this, aren't you? Yeah. I have some really cool mold making stuff. Okay. And I think what I'll do because. We can't replace these. I think these are made up of metal, and they screw onto the inner wiring. But what I could do is make a mould of that and make that um, out of plaster or something. Will repairs the hole with a fast-setting filler before using a silicon-based putty, which hardens to form a mould of the missing button. Easy with the back. Easy, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm apologising. Use. Now take it off. Let's have a look. It's got to look like. God blimey. It does look like it as well. And it's hard already. Wow. That's hey, impressive. Hey, hey. That's impressive. Hey. Well done. Well Where there's done. a will, there's a way. <laughs> there's a way. <laughs> <laughs> Jay will have to down tools momentarily, with ceramicist Guillaume having left the repair shop after completing the restoration of the mother of pearl shell, it's up to Jay to hand it back to its owner, Sue. Hello, Sue. How are you doing? You all right? I'm fine, thank you. Have you come for your mother of pearl shell? Is that right? Yes, I have, yes. OK, two minutes. Sue's about to see her rare and beautiful heirloom intact for the first time in almost 60 years. Oh, yeah, was done a brilliant job, I believe. That is absolutely wonderful. I'm sure the pieces that were broken off were down in this bottom right-hand corner here. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult to see where it <laughs> is. He's just done such a wonderful job on it. He has, hasn't he? Yes. What would Mum think of this now? Oh, she'd be thrilled, because obviously, having kept all the bits, that right. would have been her ideal I think, was to get it mended. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it never happened. So where That's is it. this going to be placed in your house now? Well, I think it needs to be framed so it's right. safe because it's still delicate rather than on a plate stand. I totally agree with a, with you. a um, similar velvety or something dark coloured background to yeah, show it off. To show it off. So what I'll do is I'll get it wrapped up now and allow you to take it home and enjoy but, it some more. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Thank you. No problem. I was absolutely amazed at the wonderful craftsmanship that Willem has done on it. I'm just in awe of them. I'm so grateful to have it back. With another satisfied customer on her way, it's back to work for Jay, 
and there's final flourishes to add to the hundred-year-old rocker. Bosh, bish, bash, bam, 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 done. What do you think then, Gov? I reckon that is really, really smart. I love that little touch there. That just sets it off beautiful. Will's done proud he's on done, there. He's done a great job of that. Carved it in, beautiful. and this little bit here as well. Has he turned it up? Well, he's, he's made it out of plaster. What? He's a skillful chap. He is, I'm telling you. I know, I know, I know. I have problems telling you. Yeah. Ladies? <laughs> Ladies, right? Yeah, we're good. Here's his name. Yeah, and he's so straight, straight in straight there. Over. So it's done, what do you reckon? That's like a ch chair version of you. That's true, that's true. Oh, yeah, yeah it is actually. In fact, if you sat that's... on there, you'd be camouflaged, <laughs> wouldn't it? Always camouflaged. <laughs> Jokers. You know I don't sit on a chair, no one sits on it onto the owner. Restoration complete, Nina's beloved chair is rocking up in Hove. Where her two sons, Sebastian and Lucas, are taking charge of this family treasure. Both Will and Jay seemed very excited when they first got the chair in the repair shop, and they both seemed very confident. I mean, it was a bit scary for me to sort of leave it there and not, not know what was going to happen. The chair's really important to my mum. It's always been there, really. It's just kind of been something that we've always played with. It's always been kind of literally part of the furniture. Are you ready to see it? I'm ready to see it. Here we go. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Look at that lovely red piping on the side, which is what I wanted a bit of red to, to remember and remind me of grandma's and granddad's farm. And look at this, new lease of life. And look down here, they've put a new covering on there that used to just be a hole and you could see right through. <sighs> precious, absolutely precious. I just wish they could be here and I could say thank you so much because they've, they've you know, they've done a really grand job with it. It's Brings beautiful. back so many happy memories, Sorry, doesn't it? Yeah. It's brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> It's priceless because obviously there's so much history that I remember and also because I'm living in a different country, every time I look at it, it does bring back memories of the farm, memories of my mum. It, you know, it is my part of my life. It is very, very important and, you know, that's why we have it and we'll keep it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Can you rock? Can you rock? Whoa, whoa. Are we going back? It's really important to recreate those kind of moments that we've had photos in the chair, and it's so nice to see Hayden in the chair as well and recapture those memories. And hopefully, in many, many, many years, his children will have photos in the chair as well. Join us next time as more items receive the repair shop treatment and are given a new lease of life.